Hey guys, welcome to another episode of CRT Gambling. Well, what am I talking about? I'm trying to make a joke. Um, it's so hard to get pitcher tubes these days, especially for some of the oddball types, that sometimes I resort to bidding on un unknown, unmarked, untested CRTs on eBay. Last time I did this, I got burned so bad I didn't even post a video on it. <laughs> Uh, burned t in two ways. One uh, was smaller than the seller uh, hinted at, and uh, I thought it was a 10 inch diagonal. That's what I'm looking for in this particular case, but it was an 8 inch. Now, I give them all the credit in the world because they had a brilliant method of shipping it, which I talked to some guys at the early TV uh, convention about, and they've encountered that as well or used it as well, which is to buy discount pillows. Pillows at Walmart, buck a piece, whatever. And put the CRT between them and ship it in a box. It arrived beautifully and it tests like new. The only problem is there was a little piece of glass broken off of an internal support structure. It bounced around in shipping and scratched the hell out of the phosphor on the inside. <laughs> I may use it as a test CRT at some point. Uh, but as a watchable CRT, no. Actually, I'm kind of curious to see what it, it looks like. And there's a lot of figure like a quarter or more of the phosphorus gone. So it cannot be used. I think it was used in the uh, metal 8-inch portable RCA TVs. A friend of mine just got one recently, in fact. So that was kind of a bummer. Now, what I really need this for, long-time fans may recall, I got a Sonora blue, sorry, pink and white portable TV out of a basement in Chicago. I was missing the back, really low end set. It was sold under a bunch of different brands, airline, uh, and Sonora for sure. Sonora, I don't even think it existed anymore. That is it's anything more than a boutique brand name. Um, but it had been a, it used a rebuilt CRT and it had a straight gun. Um, and it's not supposed to, <laughs> so it had no, it was not aluminized or anything. So there's an ion burn in the middle. I don't think it was the right type either. So that set uses an, a 10 ADP4, which is a unicorn. That's really hard to find. I think it's 8.4 volt, 450 milliamp, which is where 99% of CRTs are 6.3 volt, 600 milliamp. Well, there's also the sister CRT, the AD. So there's an ADP4 and uh, an ADP4, both 10 inch. Other reason they're hard to find is they were only used for maybe two years, like 56 to 58. Because then the 110s came on, on the scene and took over. So this is like first gen, like the 10-inch portable Admiral TVs use these. That's probably the most common place you see them. And it's got to be what this is. It's one or the other. Because it looks right. It's the, other, it's the only 10-inch CRT with, this, with the fat neck and the big base. There's a seam here, but it might have been for manufacturing. National Video Core. Yeah, there's no part number. But it's a bent gun, so it does require an ion trap. That's a good thing. So I'm going to assume it's an ABP4 and test it as such. And I'll try to squint with bright lights and see if I can make out a number anywhere. But for, it does have some fine scratches in the CRT face, but it arrived unbroken and phosphor isn't scratched up, so good so far. Dogs are excited too. Before we get to testing that, is there that 8 inch or I was lamenting? Might be an 8 XP4 test CRT. Or it could be for a little 8 inch portable, couldn't really tell. Okay, the phosphor's not quite as bad as I was making out, but uh, there are lots of specks, and I think you can hear <laughs> the problem. And I had the same thing happen with the 10 inch version too. But that wasn't shipped to me, that I bought locally off of Craigslist in a portable Admiral TV that was a rust bucket. And uh, same problem. A little bit of glass broke off, insignificant, just part of the support structure didn't impact anything from it, just like a little uh, outer bit of, you see there's all this, oh there are some 
Uh, these are actually like milky glass rods in here, like a little bit of it broke off and uh, just annihilated the screen. Otherwise, it tests like new. This one tests like new. But there's going to be a bunch of speckles in the face. I mean, I don't know, this is the last resort. This one isn't that bad, but my other 10 inch is really bad. So hopefully this will be good. This will be good. If it's, I want an ADP4. If it's an ABP4, I can do a little reworking on the series filament string and make it work. All right, let's test it. All right, trusty B and K440, here we go. Okay, that's good. Now this base is filthy and it's loose. One of the pins was bent, so I'm not entirely surprised. I might be having a little trouble making contact. Took some deoxid on the pins and finagling the <laughs> testing base to be on there at just the right angle. And we have film glowage. However, we have nothing else. We have no emissions, we have no cutoff, we don't even have the shorts lights. So that could also be a case of bad contact. So what I think I really need to do is... Um, see, the neon lights should be lighting up. We should get the needle deflection on the meter. I'm going to retouch the solder and uh, Keep at it, make sure I'm getting legal really contact with all the pins. I touched up all the pins with a soldering iron, sanded it with a little bit of fine sandpaper. Filament's glowing away, but there is absolutely no sign of life. So, the next thing I'm going to do is get out my Syncor CR70, which has little clips to clip onto each pin to make absolutely certain I'm making contact with the base. If I could still get nothing, there's another good possibility since this base is quite loose that one of the wires inside the big light cap broke off inside, which possibly can be reattached. Um, if that doesn't do it, then we might have an open cathode, which could also potentially be rewelded. In fact, I think I did, might, I might have rewelded it in one of these for a CRT some years ago. Because this isn't just a matter of a worn out CRT, even a worn out CRT that'd be some blip when you check emissions, especially when you have elevated filament voltage like I'm at seven volts right now. So there's something else going on. And I don't think it's gassy. There's no sign of blue glow, the filament looks fine. Well, I decided to pull out all the stops, so with the aid of a little bit of uh, heat from a propane torch, and I removed the base by gently uh, going back and forth over the pins and just pulled it off. Normally this is what would hold it on tight, it's a special adhesive mixture, yes I know the formula has been published, um, it a, was a resin that would bond well to glass and bakelite and have a similar coefficient of thermal expansion. Um, I use a sensor safe uh, silicone adhesive when I put them back on. But at any rate, I now have firm connection to all the pins. Still, absolutely no emissions. So I think we have an open cathode. 
I put the CRT on its side uh, for the next <laughs> procedure, so I suspect an open cathode. Oh, it's lost, right? I mean, after all, I can't get inside the glass and reconnect a broken connection. Or can I? It's a trick you can try on some with some testers. If they have a remove G1 short and uh, some type of rejuvenation. Here's what we're going to try. We're going to put this on one of the restoring positions. Uh, I'll do manual to restore. The instructions I read said rejuve to basically something that will elevate the filament voltage. Then we're going to switch the function to remove G1 short. We're going to hold down the red button and we're going to hit the neck of the CRT. Now that, we don't want to break it, but we want to jar the two broken ends, assuming there are two broken ends. And the idea is when you remove sh um, remove a short, typically it charges up a capacitor with a few hundred volts. It's going to apply that across the open elements and that should attract them together and then we'll get a spark and the weld and the heating the filament up will help to get the metal hot and be more readily uh, inclined to stick together. So a little bit of cloth on the neck and I'm going to use a plastic handle of a nut driver here and uh, we're going to give it a try. Done this a few times before. If, even if this fails, I have successfully done it two or three times on video. I'll try to dig up those, and that was years ago, I'll try to dig up the links and uh, include them in the description, but let's give this a shot. So, I'm going to go to manual to restore. Filament's going to get really bright. Then you want to go to remove G1 short and hit it before things have the time to cool down. That way it's too long because I can't quite see. It's probably filming stuff as the camera gets in the way. <laughs> All right. I think you might have seen a blue flash in there. No, we still don't have emissions. All right. We shall try again. When I have done this, it's usually taken me a few tries. Don't know exactly where to hit. Don't know exactly how much force to use. Right. All right. Remove G1 shorts. Hold down the button. And nothing. I didn't see a spark on there either. So I'm gonna keep trying this. Uh, try from different angles. Obviously, you don't want to hit this too hard. You don't want to use a hammer or anything. You're gonna shatter the glass. The idea is just to jolt the two bits of metal together. I don't think you need to hit it all that hard. But. Uh, well, this just eliminated any doubt of my tester working as a 5AXP4, hooked up exactly the same way, checks emissions just fine, we can check cutoff, it's re uh, reacting exactly as it should be, so I will hook the uh, offending CRT up one more time, try whacking it a few more times, and then I am calling it quits. Well, I am throwing in the towel for now. Uh, I have tried everything I can think of. I cannot get any emissions out of the CRT. I've tried uh, connecting the, the leads in a different way. I've uh, sanded them to <laughs> them down to bright copper. I cannot get any emissions whatsoever. Now, I think I have the smartest viewers on YouTube, so... Maybe some of you have an idea of how I can uh, resurrect the CRT. 
Uh, but I will leave you off with some old footage when I did successfully reweld a cathode. For now, um, thanks for watching, and if any of you have any thoughts on what the heck is going on, I very much look forward to reading them. Bye. National Video Corporation. 634. 34th week of 1956 would be my guess since these sets were sold in 57. Alright, time to clean off this neck. And then I'm going to actually reheat these pins and I'm going to pull this base off and make sure that all these wires are actually present and accounted for because it could also be a break inside this cap. Alright, so the deal is you put it in manual restore 2 mode which really cooks the filament then switch over to remove G1 short, hold down the red button, whack the side of the neck, look for a spark. away move short oh yeah that was a pretty healthy spark there huh <laughs> and we have emissions all right third time I have done this successfully look at that way into the green we're only at 6.3 volts on that filament Brand new. Uh, do we have cut off? Oh yes, we have cut off. The question is, how long would it hold up? Like if I just to just tap this, would it break the connection? Well, time will tell. Do a little life test. Not spectacular, but I've seen a whole lot worse. And you got great emissions. This should produce a fine, fine image.